We're gonna just gonna go right into it. What is this big announcement? Oh, oh let's shoot. go. Are you ready? I, I, I mean, the internet will probably know by now because I'm sure the title, we titled it something, but uh, I think this is the first time we can... Chris, why don't you say it because you kind of helped... Maybe tell the say it, then tell the story of how Ricky and I and what all is partaking and taking place. So we are now owners, co-owners of SoCal Gaming Expo. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Beto, back there, our amazing producer, guider, all of man of Magic of Oz, didn't even know that. So breaking news to... <laughs> but, Congratulations. Well, I'm yeah, scared, bro. Oh. Oh. Yeah. I have to, bro. I have to. Like, cordial. You gotta be in this guy. Congratulations. Yeah, Chris, yeah, Curtis, yeah. Is, Curtis is helping, too. No, he's not a fish. Whoa, Ricky! Whoa. Whoa. I got too excited. Ricky. <laughs> you, you don't understand. I've never owned something this big! Because, uh, I am so happy for you guys. Like, it is unreal. I've been waiting. I've been in the anticipation, the behind the scenes. I'm like, when are they going to find the official sign the papers? Yes, Curtis was definitely <laughs> behind the scenes stressing out, like, as we would tell him and tell him the story. But I think this is this is huge. I think we should go over kind of how it got here. You can kind of tell us. And then we could even go over, like, you know, light plans for now. This is very early stages. Our goals, our missions, our, our what we're excited for, what we think we can do with the community. But I'll let you kind of guide the story. Sure. And this is our first announcement, by the way, too. This has, an, yeah. other than a few other people, which has not gone And this out. is like the first time we even like sit in a room and talk about it because we've been traveling, we've been busy. It's been very yeah. hard to just yep. sit and kind of convene about this since it part, took place. So um, the story of it, and I'll try to keep it somewhat brief. I mean, when, I, I'm going to go way back with this. Please do. Of. When I first moved out here, which was six years ago from Connecticut to California, and uh, just to preface it, you know, I run Retro World Expo mm -hmm. on the East Coast. I've so been in the convention. We don't scene. care about that expo anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. What expo? <laughs> totally just kidding. Um, but uh, so I've been in the, you know, running a show for yeah. eight, about eight years now, I want to say, maybe going on nine years. When I first moved out here, there was two shows. There was SoCal Retro Gaming Expo, and there was another show called Retro City Fest. Festival. Um, and when I and my thoughts was to open up some stores out here, and I was like, oh, maybe there'd be a time to open up Retro World, have yeah. a show out here. It just didn't make sense at the time because there was two retro gaming shows. Um, so just kind of put that on the shelf. Uh, fast forward, just the history of SoCal and those shows. Retro City Festival kind of went by the wayside kind of a few years out. ago, and really was just the only yeah. show left in LA was SoCal uh, Gaming Expo. So that took place, I want to say, a month ago. Yes, about, about a month, a month, and month ago. ago. And um, you guys were there. Obviously, Curtis, you were there. I came the last day, um, wanted to check it out, kind of check out the scene. Um, ended up talking with Jay, who's Jay with the Game Chasers, um, who was the current owner of the In show. In case anybody didn't know, yes. Yep. And great guy, by the way. I've had a long standing relationship with Same. Jay. Uh, you guys have. Long yep, time, and, yep. You know, he's a, I would consider him a friend. And um, have always just chatted with him at the shows because we're, you know, show owners. He runs Retro Palooza. And so we'll just talk general show stuff. Nothing really came up at the show about a possible sale of it. But I kind of was just um, kind of hearing how his take on the show and how things were and stuff like that. Kind of got the impression it was a little bit of work coming from, he, travel, he lives in Texas, so he travels to California. So about a week after the show, I, I just reached out to him and um, just asked him straight up. I just said, hey, Jay, uh, you know, would you be interested in possibly selling SoCal Gaming Expo? And um, he replied back and he said, you know, I hadn't really thought about it, but potentially I would. And uh, he said, let me think about it. And he thought about it. I got a text from him a couple of days after that. And he said, you know, I, I think I would consider selling it. Mm. And we got talking about maybe his reasons why and, and, you know, what he wanted to focus on other things in his life. And um, so with any negotiation like this, obviously a big, big discussion. Yep. You know, we came up with the price. And um, at that point, I w was thinking, OK, well. I'm just talking with Jay. How how can I put this on? Because I have a partner, um, yeah. who I should mention, who's also involved in the show as a Lance, co-owner, Lance. Lance Cortez, um, who's been a partner of mine with Retro World for, uh, since the beginning. And I think it's good for the community to know that he is Lance from the the Retro Video Game Years. From Video, video Game, game years, years. From and Retro World TV. Yep. Video Game Years. You've seen Lance. If you've been around the scene for a long time, you know Lance is a part of the scene. You know he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's talking about. It's not just some random, you know, like, hey, Bill, you've never met him, never heard of him, but yeah. he has an important and, role um, in this community. Awesome guy. He's been an awesome partner of mine, and we've put on Retro World for years, so I talked with him, see if he wanted to be in, and then I'd always thought, you know, if this was going to transpire right away, I thought, okay, you know, between knowing you guys for the last several years and working with you on the podcast here, I, I couldn't have thought of anybody better to come in as a partner than you guys collectively. So 
proposed it to you guys. You guys seemed very interested. We kind of all came together as Voltron to form a team. <laughs> I was thinking like the Power Rangers. But Power like, Rangers. <laughs> more, actually, like Voltron more better. like Captain Planet over here. <laughs> Captain Planet. And um, so uh, we went through all the finalization of contracts, and yep. this is our first announcement. And like you said, the, the very, very early stages of what will be uh, quite a bit of work, um, yes. putting the show on, uh, try, uh, have a lot of plans for bringing new stuff yeah. to it. Um, you guys are going to have, have all sorts of ideas and elements that yeah. you're going to want to bring to it. So it, it's going to be an awesome, awesome time. Yeah, man. It's, it's, it's so – it's unbelievably exciting to me that this is happening. So thank you again for bringing us even – in or even the idea of wanting to bring us in yeah and you know it was so when you brought it to me it was so unexpected but it was one of those things where the minute you said it it was like wow this makes sense like wow i'm really interested all the all these thoughts were just completely positive you know me you know my deciding factors in life is you know talking to my wife i don't pray about it but it was just like everything was like Yes, 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 of course. Why not? And Jay's done a great job, of course. Never want to talk down any of the things he's done. He's done great there. But as you know, with anything, when you're taking something over and it becomes yours, we're just racking our brains with so many ideas, so much excitement. And one of the mo biggest moments that was like, whoa, to me is like, we've been doing YouTube in this community, quite literally with the SoCal retro <laughs> game hunting scene for 12 years on YouTube. That it's crazy that all these people we've hung out with for 12 years that have been part of our community, like if you would have told me that when I was a kid or when we started YouTube, that we'd be co-owners, all of us own this together along with Lance, of the SoCal Retro Game Hunting Convention where thousands and thousands and thousands of people go, I wouldn't have believed it. Like there's no way, right? This isn't in, you know, running like a, you know, a small event or a gathering of some sort. This is a, which by the way, those are all great and very beneficial to the community. But this is such a big scale thing that like I immediately told my brothers, they were freaking out. Like there is no freaking way. Like this is the coolest thing ever. You know, we even got like emotional, you know, we're like kids playing Nintendo together. You know, it's like, dude, like this is what we're doing now. Like I think it goes so much beyond the feeling of successful YouTube. And, you know, I think we could say we've had success on YouTube, you know, with this podcast and the main channel. But this feels like such a different reward because it's like in person with the community, with these people that we've known forever. So for me, it's like such, such a mind boggling experience. And I'm so happy that you feel that way. Yeah. And I feel the same way, too. And the way that the show for me, Retro World, from putting it on for eight years has felt for me is it has been such a, a labor of love. You know, obviously, it's a business. There's money involved and stuff like that. But it is like I've, I've always felt it's like such a gift back to the community. Totally. And the stuff that we do and that we talk about and like bring it really when I go back for Retro World every year. And of course, I used to live there. So it was a lot easier. Now I fly back 3000 miles. So it'll be nice to have this show here. Yeah. But the feeling. I get when I go back there is just seeing all the vendors that I know, seeing everybody that is a part of that show. And once a year, I get to go back to experience that. Now I get to experience it here with you guys. And of course, this community out here is a much, it's, it's a different community. Yeah. It's all yeah. different faces and different people. Yep. And when the show goes on, it is like such a flurry of so much going on for the two days of it. And there's months and months leading up to it. But the feeling afterwards, yeah. for me, has always been like one of the best feelings in the world. Yep. I go home exhausted and like just so tired. I poured my heart out into it. But then I just relive like that was like the best thing thing every every year i experience totally that. and so you guys will get to experience that now when you see when the show comes together and you're a part of it it's more, like one of the best more than hype ever. i think one of the coolest aspects of this it feels like you guys are just bringing it home to where it needed to be right yeah like the socal people you yep. know what i mean not to do any disjustice to jay because jay did an amazing job the first expo i ever went to but it's almost like we have such a great community here, and like you guys are all now Californians, right? Yep. So now it's just like you have a better reason to put on a better show for your vendors, for your community, for all your your fans of support. And I know that's why Chris feels he's like I'm bringing Retro World Expo, like uh, if I can say the word here, <laughs> right? You're bringing it here, yeah. and now you have like more of like a, a position that you don't have to go and 
go and visit yeah. now. It's going to just be here with you. you yeah. Know what I mean? I'm excited for people to come from like out of state too. Of course, that's what happens at conventions. Yeah. People oh, yeah. drive, people fly, oh, yeah. people do that. And we've been to so many conventions. Ricky, off, off the back of your head, if I, I, I didn't ask you before, if you have to shotgun one stupid, <laughs> crazy idea that you would add to the expo, what would it be? A crazy idea. Like I'm gonna start and say clearly yo yo national championships. But <laughs> Ricky get off of that. Trend. Too many games actually does that. Oh, they no! do, they no! do do that. No! Yes, they do. No, they, do. they do do that. Pogs? They do no pause. Pause now. I mean not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. <laughs> Might not be a lot to invest in, so that'd be good like pretty cheap. Come on, Ricky, what's yours? My crazy idea, it'd be a, I, I kinda like Chris's I I'm gonna I'm gonna run off of Chris's idea a little bit, but It'd be cool if you can, like, the people that go can actually wrestle in a ring. Ooh. <laughs> and we'd, Wouldn't that be awesome? so we, we bring wrestling to Retro World, and I actually would love to bring wrestling to SoCal. I mean, Let's it's an it. awesome, awesome thing. But we have never done what you're talking about, which is actually, like, you rip, sign up? go wrestle Ricky and got ring. beef with your friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be awesome. I thought Ricky was going to say churro eating contest. We Dang got it. Ultimate That's Warrior it. over there already. <laughs> Yo, Curtis, the Ultimate Warrior. Would you wrestle? Huh? Would yeah. you wrestle? Put me in a singlet, bro. I'll be ready. Oh, I would love <laughs> to see Gabo, Ben, and Curtis. Because they all come as off as strong men. I want to see those guys fight. Ben is probably pretty strong. Oh, I, 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 pro- he works out. I'd yeah. love to fight Phoenix Resale and Retro Rick. I would oh smoke God. them. The fight of the strong. <laughs> but I would love to see it. <laughs> I think uh, one of the questions I have is, like, what type of dynamic that you think that you can bring in to the expo, like, now? Like, what would be your your difference coming in? Um. So right away, I mean, it, and this is just a... Again, Jay ran an awesome show, yeah, yeah. not to yeah. knock that at all, his show, um, and, and well attended. I mean, when you went to SoCal last year, very, very, Lots very well Good attended. Numbers. Amazing vendors, uh, so many games there. Um, th- there's a lot of things that we've done with, with Retro World, and you'll see at other shows, that I would love to bring in right away. Mm-hmm. Uh, expand the arcade, um, expand what we call esports, but just tournaments in general, whether yeah. it's new, newer fighting tournaments, old school fighting tournaments. Awesome. Um, wrestling, again, is a possibility. Possibility. I've already talked with um, uh, Vince Clementi, with who runs the uh, Tetris World Championships. Uh, we run a. He, Let's they, go. Those are in Portland. Um, the main the main event yeah. is in Portland, but they do regionals. Uh, he's already willing to do a regional Tetris event. We'd probably call it the SoCal uh, Regional, awesome. which would be a, a Tetris World Championship wow. event. Um, uh, I would love to add something because it's SoCal, and I know I'm biased. I would love to add like. Best trick contest flat ground on skateboard. Ooh, I would love I like something that. with skateboards. You got to help me out with like insurance liability and stuff. <laughs> well, we always have insurance. Well, on I the would show. love like your flat ground best trick. Just, on a vintage skateboard, I mean, on one of these single a, kicks right here. You just need a liability waiver. You'd I be mean, right. yeah, you could do liability waivers, but the insurance policies on these events are very big. Okay, like, so you, we're good. Yeah, probably. perfect. Yeah. 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 Like, but, we're wrestling. <laughs> Gapo, break my leg. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring out those Ric Flair the underwear I have. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have Aaron wear it. Oh, I will <laughs> gladly rock Ric Flair underwear. So, and with Retro World, I mean, we I, I used to call it this years ago, is we used to just call it, like, wacky and weird ideas. Like, some of the things that you come up with like that are, if, as long as they can be brought in and implemented, yeah. I mean, they are just, they can be some of the most fun things that totally. you can do. So, to answer your question, Curtis, really, like, I think one of our main goals would be to expand the show, and aside from just vendors, offer a lot of other things that attendees could do at the show that'll be really fun yeah. events. And I think we come from a good place, you know, like I mentioned earlier, us being around these people for so long right we've we've had so almost like a mole right like we've had the inside ear without being the the man right we, we weren't the convention owner we weren't this so people like they spoke to us what they wanted right like this needs to be this should why isn't this at conventions why don't people do this so we've been able to hear all that and get like that inside intel for for 12 years yeah. you know from literally socal community so i feel like we have that like inside you know one up we'll tell you everything chris <laughs> there's a lot you don't know I'm like dang you have all this insight behind the scenes <laughs> no and again you being too even like a local you know you you've owned the hb store you know your other stores down here i mean you know the people right you know the people coming in not even people who are just like hardcore con goers which are like you would say like the extreme but you know like the day-to-day like the mom comes in who's looking for this right there's all different ways to understand you know the market you know well and it's a good point too because you know los angeles and southern california and where we live 
has always been like, uh, I don't know, like a leader in new ideas mm -hmm. and kind of like strange, whether it's fashion or other things that come out of here. So I certainly could see this show being where it is and, you know, with us and the people we know and community and stuff like a lot of different things going on Got and, it. It, and it kind of having a different vibe than maybe, maybe even other gaming shows that are out there. What, what fighting game gets to have its own tournament that people don't let now? You're wearing it. I'm going to say Killer Instinct. Oh, you don't see Killer no. Instinct. I would love a Killer all. Instinct. I don't know, man. I think I was just watching that one video you sent me with uh, the Completionist, and it was the Capcom versus uh, the SNK. Yeah. Oh, that's great. You bring that that's arcade favorite. from the office. I, I perfect ran Gerard <laughs> in Capcom versus SNK. Oh, like no flawless? Way. I flawless him. <laughs> and you want This is actually a hilarious story. Did you get a discount? So this is when I was like new jumping in back to YouTube and I didn't want... Gerard's like a great friend. I don't know why I even thought this. I was like, I beat him. Ricky recorded and he didn't touch me. And I was like, my brain was like, I don't think I should put that on video. Like, almost thought like I'd be like ruining his name because he's a completionist. Yeah. And I didn't put it on the video. I just put it me winning. Like, it's in the video. You see me like play him. It's like fight, and it's like sound effects, and then it's like me being like, "Oh, dude, I beat him." And I cut out the part where I'm like, "I just perfect ran the completionist." <laughs> So and there is nothing worse than getting like I've Mortal Kombat is my game and if you ever get flawless like oh dude, oh, dude. in the live audience too you <laughs> oh, know you might God. as well just oh, go buy it for yourself <laughs> just don't play the game anymore don't, you're done really with the scene yeah. Yeah. yeah wow and to finish up this topic I just want to say you guys are the most deserving people to be able to be putting on this show and I'm telling you right now I'm so proud of you guys man and I'm excited to that to be able to go with you guys well, this yeah, I, will, I will say this Curtis <laughs> so, Curtis is going to this is the first time we're telling Curtis this what? we did a Zoom call the other day we made us Google spreadsheet of our roles I'm like dude throw Curtis's name on there <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> we put Curtis on what do we put him on volunteers oh they help us with the volunteers yeah maintenance I got it we're good <laughs> <laughs> it was funny well it's just it, but if anything that's a testament to you and your helpfulness because I was telling Lance who uh, the other co-owner it's four of us so just to make it ultra clear yep. you know de deciding our roles but it was basically a testament to you of me being like hey we have also our friend curtis lance doesn't know him so he's like well how do you like what's your way of describing like he's just always willing to help so yeah. that's a testament to you and, mr viper and it's a good point to bring up too and um like putting on this show while it's you know there's four co-owners of this you know w w the people in the community such as yourself curtis obviously you're a good friend but there with retro world there are so many people that are involved with that yep um people that i meet every year new people that come in and that help out or that have ideas they might yep. say hey i want to run game shows at, yep. the, at the event yep so to the community if you have any ideas or you want to be involved i mean yep. once yep. we you know this goes out please reach out if you want to be involved and, in any way and what a blessing that we have this community that we've built because when i would like you know tell the close people that we know you know the people that we could tell before we break it out i mean every single person i told was like immediately let me help i want to help and it's not oh. you know they know it's not a, a, a paid thing right it's it's a volunteer it's like a church right it takes a team i even say with family members when i'm out with you know your kids and yeah. someone's misbehaving it takes a village right and it's no difference it takes a village to, to raise something, yeah. right? whether it's a kid, whether it's a, a podcast, whether it's anything, there is teamwork involved. And same with this. Dude, what a feeling of chills talking about it finally. Like, <laughs> I know, oh, man. I, I really, and I, and I, you know, I like to put our my best foot forward and stuff. And I really hope in this, not I hope, I'm going to speak it, that we're just going to, not for our sake of pride, but just be the coolest thing for people to not just specific to SoCal anybody who wants to fly on down Ricky said he'll cover anybody's flights in the community <laughs> <What>? <laughs> anybody. we're gonna close it out right there no <laughs>